Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Father's Day. This is as close as I can get to being here with you on this Sunday morning. While you're at worship, I'm at worship at annual conference over in Salem. I'll be headed back to Boise this afternoon. But I felt it was important to bring a message to you this morning to continue the series that we've begun about good news for all different kinds of people, people who have different core values, different things that make them tick. If there was a theme song for the person that I'm thinking of today, it would probably have to be, I'm just a girl who can't say no. Because we're talking about people pleasers. And I think you probably, as soon as I say that, know some people pleasers. Hello, imaginary choir back there. We all know some people pleasers in our lives. The ones I know say things like this. I really do have a hard time saying no. Sometimes it's because I really want to do something. Other times it's to get, well, it's to get you to like me. And I'm afraid that you won't like me if I don't do things for you. And if I do like you or your organization or the group you hang out with, I'm going to work constantly and quietly behind the scenes. I'm going to anticipate needs and I'm going to help out in every way so things run smoothly. You, you might say I'm self-effacing that way. I'm not looking for recognition. I'm not trying to get center stage or in the limelight. But I will say this, if you don't notice what I do, if you take me for granted, I will be very hurt. I will be tremendously disappointed because when I work hard, I get exhausted. And if I get exhausted, sometimes I get angry. And let me tell you, that is not pretty. It usually happens only if things build up over time. And I don't think you care enough about what I'm doing for you. Sometimes people call me a martyr or they say I'm overly dramatic when I feel underappreciated. Some people in my life say that my whole way of being can be a little overwhelming. I would never forget your birthday, although I do notice that sometimes you haven't planned very much for mine. And even though I can anticipate all your needs before you even know you have them, that isn't always returned for me. I have expectations. Some people in life do not welcome the help I'm offering, and I do think of myself as a helper. But some of the truly honest people around me, they say it sometimes seems manipulative or that I'm being possessive. And that truly makes me sad because I consider myself to be generous and really very loving. Well, that's what a lot of the people pleasers in my life might say. And I want to say to them and to any of you, we do appreciate how generous you can be, the enthusiasm you bring and the care you show. And sometimes we do feel all those other things. I guess at the core, the problem for you people pleasers is that you feel you need to earn our love. And if you say no, or if you stand up for yourself, or if you take care of yourself instead of everybody else around you, you think we won't love you. Now, I can't speak for everybody around me, but I can say this for myself. When I see the real you, people pleaser, when I see the vulnerable person who simply wants to be loved, all I feel for you is love. And I learned that by following Jesus, who showed me the love of God. There is good news and there is bad news for people pleasers. Now, let's start with the bad news. The bad news was found in Ephesians, which we heard just a little while ago. Your works just won't save you. You won't get any love at all through your works. Bad news. Now, the good news is found in Ephesians also that we just read. It goes like this. 
Your works just won't save you. Your works won't get you any love at all. And that's good news because God's love is a gift. It is just that simple. You can't earn it. You don't need to earn it. It's there just to be received. If you can let your guard down, if you can extend open hands to receive something instead of hands full of stuff that you're trying to give away. Now, people pleasers and everybody else who is here today, I do want to clarify that this does not mean we should stop altogether being generous and loving. That is so not the point here. The point is your motive. If you are giving in order to get love, it's simply not going to work. If you're giving because you have received, well, then love just kind of keeps flowing, doesn't it? It's quite different. It feels different because it really is different. Fear gets taken out of that formula. Fear that you aren't going to be loved. Fear that there isn't enough love. Fear that maybe somehow you don't deserve love. So with that in mind, any of us, but especially people pleasers, can take the skills we have, the hard work we're able to do, the ability to see what's needed, the enthusiasm, the sensitivity, and we can do very good things from an easy place. In the scripture from James that you heard earlier, we see that faith without works is simply dead. Good work is simply how we live faithfully. Good work just becomes our way of life. Now, I think um, earlier in the service you saw a little video, the Now Testament. And I think that video about a church that tries to be everything to everybody gives us a chance as a congregation to reflect on ourselves. Around this idea of people pleasing, here's a little question for us. Do we say yes too often to too many things? I want to explore this for a moment. You think along with me. The most useful literature that I have read on healthy churches says that churches who are the most healthy are those that have the clear focus that focus, that they are simple churches. We have adopted a phrase, a focus, here at Hillview. Hopefully it comes to mind for you when I say it. Hillview is a place where faith matters. It's a way we have of kind of narrowing or naming at least a little bit who we think we are. We've begun to clarify for folks who visit here what we think a healthy Christian looks like, what a healthy follower of Jesus looks like. And that's someone who comes to worship. It's someone who finds themselves in a study or small group where they can grow their faith and deepen their relationship with God. And it's someone who offers service out in the world. So worship and study and service. Simple enough, really. But in each of these areas, we have some complexity here at Hillview. Intentional complexity. And I think this makes things challenging for us, and that's what I want to explore with you a little bit. We've stayed, for instance, intentionally focused as a blended worship service on Sunday mornings, trying to offer a cohesive experience of love and prayer and singing that we share with each other contains many diverse, different ingredients. Now, I think nobody sitting here today likes all of it equally. Hopefully, everybody appreciates some of it in some way. We have a kind of agreement that I've brought up several times. Your gift to this community is that you participate and accept some of the things in worship that you don't particularly enjoy because someone else here does enjoy it and someone is gifting you in the same way at different times in different parts of our service. I think this is wonderful, and I think it, for the most part, works for us. We're not so much trying to be all things to all people, not trying to be people pleasers, 
but we are trying to honor and appreciate the diversity that is here. And I do think we do this with a certain amount of grace. I could say the same thing about our theological points of view. We're not all in lockstep here about how we understand God, but we do have, again, some agreements. Our church tenets that allow us to speak in a way, in a general voice, about many important things have helped to guide us. We are diverse in our thinking and understanding of the faith, and yet we do try to be appreciative and respectful of the various points of view here, and we try to be responsive when we falter in that. I think we do this with a certain amount of grace. That same complexity shows up in how we offer service to others, our action in the world, our outreach into the community. Now, I have to tell you quite frankly, occasionally to me, it feels like we have too much going on, and it can be a little bit confusing. How do I volunteer at the friendship feast or help out with that Saturday sack lunch thing or get involved with our own community meal? And, and what was that postal worker food drive? Does it happen often or did I miss the one chance there was for that? What exactly is Corpus Christi and how is that different from the interfaith sanctuary? Or do they work together and do I only give money or could I volunteer my time? What is the VIM team and are they still in Honduras and how is it that they get there? And does the preschool need volunteers? And what is a Kiva loan and how many offerings can we take on a Sunday morning before we go crazy? All good things, seriously. All such good things, all reflecting our interests and our diversity and our passion for the needs of the world. But this is not easy to navigate, especially if you are newer to this community. This is the least simple part of our desire to simply grow faith that matters. Well, having said that, I offer good news today for people who are people pleasers in general. You do not have to say yes to everything in order to be loved. No is a perfectly good and healthy word. And at the same time, I am raising the question for us as a congregation. Our simple mission in this church to have faith that matters, well, it is not always so simple, especially in terms of how we put our faith into action. It's difficult and maybe not even appropriate to say no, when the very core value, I think, that is reflected in this congregation is our willingness and our desire to honor and to say yes to the diversity that is here. And that is intrinsically complicated. We have been touched by God's spirit, and this place is alive, even when it's empty. We have so much to offer. Faith that matters means faith that becomes good work in the world. It becomes our way of life. Faith that matters means that we are not really people pleasers in any way, but that we are trying instead to live out these simple things. We trust that we are loved by God we trust our love for each other, and we trust that following Jesus is going to help us navigate the world outside these doors. It's that simple, and it's that complicated. Amen.